Commissioner Sear. Uh, yeah, uh, present, Twin Lake, Michigan. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Uh, present, Muskegon State Park. Commissioner Laring. First City of Muskegon. Commissioner Nash. Here, City of Muskegon. Commissioner Pego. Here, Grand Haven, Michigan. Commissioner uh, Chairman Skolnick. Here, City of Norton Shores. Commissioner Wilkins. I know she's here at the. She just don't need Okay. Make her a co host. Okay. Did you hear me? Yes, yes I got you. I got you now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And Commissioner Hughes. Here, Muskegon Township. And Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Brown is excused. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. For those of you who don't know, uh, Commissioner Brown had a death in his family. His mother-in-law passed away. So I will be running the uh, Community Development and Strategic Planning meeting today. Uh, next on our agenda is approval of the minutes of May 13th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Hubby Wright, second by Commissioner Wilkins. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns on the minutes of May 13th? Seeing none, Kristen, may I have a roll call, please? This is Kathy. I'm back. Oh, Kathy? Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Learing? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pego? Yes. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. And that motion carries. Ne Correct, Kathy? <laughs> Next on our agenda is public comment on an agenda item. Is there any member of the public that would like to comment? either in the boardroom or online. You can raise your hand if you have, I don't see any hands raised. Is anyone else? And there is no one in the boardroom today, Commissioner. Okay, th thank you very much. Oh. Uh, seeing no uh, public comments, we will move on to items for consideration. Uh, to, uh, number CDSP uh, two, 21-06-14, move to approve the resolution and project agreement for grant TF20-0124 in authorizing the Muskegon County Parks Department to accept a grant from the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund for the Nugent Sands Property South Project Phase 1 located in Norton Shores, Michigan, and to have the chairman of the board sign the agreement. Move. Support. Second. We have a motion and support, motion by Commissioner Nash, second by Commissioner Wilkins. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Madam Chair, I have a, a comment and a question yes. if I may. Go ahead, Commissioner Laring. So I am wondering where we're at with the match for this thing. Mark, can uh, you, um, or Bob, one of you can help us with that. Mark, Mark should do it. Good afternoon. Let me make sure everybody can hear me. Yes. Good afternoon. So we're working with the, the local uh, conservation and their goal is to raise 500. So currently they're at 350,000 that exclude the 250,000 that we set aside. Uh, so we're, uh, and we haven't even started asking locals to participate. Those are where, uh, most of those were outside of the county that they raised my understanding. Um, the 350. I'm, I'm sorry, Mark, I was having a couple of uh, technical difficulties. Could you please repeat that? Yeah. There's currently 350,000 raised. The conservation is working on another 150 for a total of 500,000. That does not include our 250,000 that we committed uh, a year ago. Okay. And this uh, is for the, oh, sorry. So Go what ahead, percentage Mary. of the match okay. has been met for this grant to accept this grant? Uh, to, for the, as far as the state's concerned, it's, it's has been met. 
uh, okay. because the homeowner uh, agreed, not the homeowner, the property owner agreed to do the other five million. I mean, excuse me, the um, 250. Bob, is that correct? 250 sound correct? 2.5. No, 2.5. It was 5 million. 2.5. Yeah. Yeah. Total for the total project. So we broke up this into two phases phase one and phase two. So his donation was split as well. So the match requirement for phase one has been met. Is that what you're telling me? There will be no additional revenue coming out of the county for that? Correct. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Marcia, go Madam ahead. Chair? Yes, yeah, go ahead. That, the 500,000 that we're raising, I assume that's for the development um, phase. Is that correct? No, that is not, correct. Not for the acquisition, but for the development. Uh, I would like to see some public involvement in how that uh, plays out and to get ideas from the public. And uh, we can maybe talk about how that could happen, uh, but not at a meeting because there's the two minute, you know, restriction that is a bit, uh, you know, won't facilitate a good discussion. So I'd like to see some kind of public involvement in, in deciding what is developed. I mean, we can go ahead with a parking lot, you know, that's, that needs to happen, but uh, so I'm yes. not sure. Go ahead, point, go ahead, yes. yes, go ahead. That's part of the plan. We're required to do that through the state anyway. So oh, there would be planning sessions set in place. Now I want to go back to Commissioner uh, Laring's point. Um, this money helps us to get the facility open. If we want to put sewer in there, if we want to put water in there, if we want to do camping someday, um, obviously, our goal is to get grant dollars to make those um, projects happen, but um, I, I can't say today that we'll never put county funds in there, but as far as the funds that we need to open up the park and begin the operation, that matches, that, that fundraising has, is well on its way. Okay, so we're only talking about uh, the grant approval right now, but you're, the other issue you brought up is dealing more with uh, item number 15, not 14, correct? The... Yes, I think that's correct, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, right. I mean, any improvements we want to do there always should be brought to the, to the board mm -hmm. for consideration. And Marsha, another thing too, when once we get this all set, we only have a certain amount of time to get it open to the public. So there will probably be some things like walking trails and things in there first, mm -hmm. so that that will get us, you know, open to the public. And right. then we will start with different, you know, ideas from the public to move forward. Right. Right. Are there any other questions on this motion? Yes, Commissioner. Yes, go ahead. You... Go ahead, Commissioner Pagel. Okay. So, um, Mark, can you explain? On page five of our agenda, it says the project total is actually seven million four hundred and fifty thousand, and our match is two million four hundred and fifty thousand. So, am I missing something here? If our match is only five hundred thousand, but our paperwork on our agenda says two million four hundred and fifty thousand. I, I see where the two point four. That that's that land act. Is I mean that's the property in itself so the homeowners is coming the up property with that owner. Yes, yes the property owners coming up with that 2.45 and is okay. the conservancy uh donation involved in that acquisition piece there's some money i think it's uh, i have it here roughly in front of me spreadsheet there is a closing cost that they're helping us uh come up with as well right but it's the development that that we will be uh rate that we are raising money for and that's not in this vote correct i mean yeah we, we'll still do we'll continue doing fundraising on this project well into the future but uh, commissioner pagel did i answer that question so when i say there's we're not talking about the five hundred thousand. uh that's not in this motion or next we'll spend some of that money on the next motion but that's what we're trying to raise. That's what the land conservancy is trying to raise for us. The right. So, what is the time frame that they have to raise? How much by? And they got three hundred fifty. They want to do another fifty. Their goal is to have it done this year. This year, they want to have that completed. 
but we won't spend that money this year. Um, we're we're thinking that each park parking lot, which we'll talk about the next one, roughly seven eighty thousand. Um, so it's one hundred sixty thousand. So we don't anticipate to spend that total five hundred thousand this year. And then you have ninety days to open up the park after the acquisition, correct? After everything is acquisition, the signing, everything is complete. The property is actually ours. The state says go. At that point, we have 90 days. So then after 90 days, you have to formulate, or we're going to have to formulate some sort of a security measures, maintenance, insurance, I'm going to assume, and every other thing that has to be involved with having this park open. What is the right. total cost of that? Well, it depends on how much you, we want to go into the, how much we want to do. Right now, the idea is just to have a trail around it. So you're talking me, well, Ottawa Sands, they have someone show up a couple times a week, pick up trash. So there's really, I think there's 23,000 what they spend annually on. So we have able to use some of this money to help with operations. But our goal is to have, um, we, need, we need money coming in on a daily basis, right? I mean, any plan to make a park successful and our plan currently would be to charge for parking, just like they're doing other, other places throughout United States, really. Um, so that money received from park will help go into the maintenance and upkeep of this park. So you have a budget of 23000 annually for maintenance for all of the county parks? No, it, it'd be just this one. For just this one? And where is that 23000 annually coming from? Well, initially, it can come out of this uh, fundraising that we began, right? Um, and then the, the point is raising money throughout the year from the parking fees. Every single year? Through fees? Yeah. Through fees. Parking. Parking. Through parking, parking, yeah. Parking permit. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Pago? Uh, thank you. I don't think so at this time. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, could we have a roll call on the motion, please? Commissioner Larry. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. No. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you very much. That motion passes. Next on our agenda is Motion number CDSP 21 slash 06 15. Move to authorize staff to issue a request for bids for the Dune Harbor par parking lot on South Pond. So move. Support. We have a motion by Commissioner Nash, second by Chairman Skolnick. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Uh, if I might. Yes, Kim. Mr. Sear, go ahead. Um, do we have, we're going to request bids for the Dune Harbor parking lot. Um, do you know what the plan is for the parking lot as far as it, is it going to be blacktop? Is it going to be crushed to aggregate? Uh, uh, Mr. Lukens, could you address that, please? Thank you. Certainly. Bob Lukens, Community Development Director for the county. Uh, yes, the, we have plans drawn up for the parking lots. Uh, one will be located off of Lincoln's Avenue and Southwood in uh, Norton Shores. And the other will be located off of Seminole Road uh, near the curve at the, uh, onto Norton Hills Road. Um, these two parking lots will hold approximately 25 to 35 vehicles and um, <clears throat> will be a paved, paved lots. Um, we are getting prices for, for both paved and gravel lots. Uh, just to, you know, determine the, the difference between those two uh, options. Uh, but as it stands now, we're looking at paved lots with lighting and uh, security gates at the entrances so the, so the uh, lots could be locked off at night for security purposes. Mr. Lukens? Yes. Um, you said 25 to 30 vehicles. Is that per lot or total between the two lots? Per lot. Thank you. I'd have to go back and look at the exact numbers, but it's approximately 25 to 35. 
Thank you, Bob. And I do think it's a good idea to get bids for both right now, because if we don't do the asphalt now, we're going to have to go back and do it. Right. Commissioner Larry, did you have a question? Madam Chair, yes, I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, my question is, what is the budget set for this already for the parking lot? For the lots now, uh, as Mr. Eisenbart said, we're looking at about $160,000 with the paved lots. Um, they could come in less than that. Um, but right now, as it stand, it's, stands, it's about 160000 and that includes the site lighting that was discussed? Yes, we'll be using LED lighting, um, which should be very cost effective and energy efficient. Okay, and then my next question is, and that comes out of the, the, the fundraising that was already done, uh, which the county tipped or started that account with 250,000. Um, it's gonna come out of that fund, correct? Yes. And, and the combination of the that fund that money and uh, some of the funds that have already been raised. Well, that's what I'm. That's all that account that's got about five hundred thousand in it currently. Correct? Yes, I'm correct. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call, please? Sure, Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pego. No. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright? Yes. Commissioner Lehring? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you, Kathy. And that motion carries. Next on our agenda is, I gotta pull my agenda back up a second. Here we go. Next on our agenda is unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business to come before the Community Development Strategic Planning Committee? Seeing none, is there any new business? Uh, Madam Chair, if I might. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Sear. Uh, I'd like to read something really quick. Uh, this is from uh, Lansing, Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer, the, our governor today, accelerated the end of the COVID-19 epidemic orders on gatherings and maskings as COVID-19 cases continue to plummet following increased vaccinations. Beginning June 22nd, capacity in both indoor and outdoor settings will increase to 100% and the state will no longer require residents to wear a face mask. Uh, Given that information, that release from the governor today, uh, I'd like to read uh, in our uh, agenda. It says the Muskegon County Board has ordered, uh, this is in the full board agenda, has ordered mandatory face coverings for attendance at Muskegon County. Can we County have the board. muted? I'm getting background. Yeah, there's a lot of talking going on. I'm sorry. There right. we go. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, going on, it says 50% boardroom capacity is set by the fire marshal will be followed for my OSHA and MD HHS guidelines. A total of 35 people, including staff, may attend the meetings in person. If more than 35 people attend, the meeting will be recessed for 30 minutes to provide time for those who wish to attend to log on to the meeting virtually through the above means. Uh, given the uh, new directions from our governor, uh, I would move... Uh, today that we would uh, strike this uh, verbiage from our agendas going forward. Second, can I make a friendly amendment to this motion? Go ahead. And some what Commissioner Sears says, go ahead and let's yes, hear Yes, I would like to amend this motion to add that we reverse the state of the emergency of our county and we lift that. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, Bob. Um, before we do this, Mark and I have already discussed this today. We're planning on, I want this to be done in an orderly way. I'm planning on doing it next week, starting next week, but we need to talk about it and make sure we're, we've got the room capacities correct. There may, may not be any restriction on room capacities. We're not sure yet. And he's gotten an opinion from our uh, corporate counsel about this. Um, just give us a day or so to work this out. It's coming. It'll happen likely next. I'm sure it's going to happen next week. I don't think we need to do anything right now. I 
Well, I, I will have to say that it, this would go into effect on the 22nd anyway. So if we will be meeting well, before we the have 22nd. a motion on the floor with the second. So has a friendly amendment been accepted by Kim? Kim, do you accept the friendly amendment? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. We can continue discussion, correct? Uh, yes, Bob. Um, I appreciate your concerns on that, and we can, you know, we will make the final decision when when we go back on next week, anyway. Because no matter what happens today, it will go to the board next week. So yeah, it'll it'll likely be done by then anyway. Right. So doesn't it have to go through committee first? This, this is, is the a committee. committee. This is the right. Right. That's why I, we're bringing it up now. That's why. Right. So that's why I said it will be decided on next week. So only if it passes committee if you today. Want to make changes next week. That's fine. But I think Correct. we still need to Wait. strike what we have here now. No, 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 because it's supposed to come out of committee. If it goes to the full board, how does it come? It's got to go through a committee, and this is the committee. And your motion stands. We need to vote on this motion. I, I, uh, Madam Chair, yes. uh, let Marsha first. Marsha, go ahead. You're Can't muted. hear you, Marsha. Can't hear you, Marsha. Okay, sorry. Here you um, are. I think we need to, uh, we don't need to rush through this because uh, uh, it's going to happen next week the way uh, uh, Melinda would like it to. Um, I think we, if we vote down the amendment and just vote the original uh, uh, motion from Mr. Sear, uh, I think that's the more the cleaner way to go is just just do that first, and then after Bob's able to work things out with Mark and and get you know all the ducks in a row, then we'll we'll uh, follow through with the undoing of the emergency order. Is that is that Melinda? Can I get you to withdraw? Is that your what you'd like, amendment? Bob? Yeah, I, it's going to happen anyway. I mean, I understand the eagerness to get points for doing this, but I mean, I, I, everybody read the governor's press release today, and we all know what's going to happen. Um, you know, if you want to score some points on your Facebook page, do what you want to do. I don't make posts about this stuff on Facebook, Bob. I don't either. Uh, Melinda, um, do. Mr. Sears requested you withdraw your motion. Do you have a decision on that? I would rather not. Thank you. Thank you. So we vote on the amendment first and then on Mr. Sears' motion. Yes. I will be a no yes. on the amendment and a yes. Negative, on the negative. There's one vote. The, the friendly amendment was accepted in the original motion. So we have one motion. Okay. So if oh, you want to change this and the whole thing needs to be voted now, no, now, and then it can be changed. Okay. So, so can, does everybody understand what we're doing read, now? No, I do not understand what you said. Susie. Would you reread the? Would you read what the motion will be, Susie um, or Kim? Kathy, I guess it's Susie. Sorry. Yeah, Kathy. Yeah, Kathy, can did you write the motion down? Hughes, I did have a question about the motion. Okay. Yeah. As Commissioner Steer had read the language pertaining to the agenda, that we were going to remove it from the agenda is what I heard. That is correct. So no, so it's no longer, uh, and so it is no longer in effect. I, I'd okay. like to strike it and cancel it totally. Okay, I'll because my understanding. My understanding. So what is no longer in effect? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make it clear on on the record here that the language on the agenda regarding the capacity limits will be removed. I, I didn't okay. understand that we were changing the practice of removing. The, I'm trying the, to say that right. Go the, ahead, Commissioner Sear. The motion is to remove it from the agenda and to eliminate all of that verbiage from our. Will no longer. There's no longer be, going to be mandatory face coverings in the in the boardroom, and the capacities that are listed there will no longer be in effect. Commissioner Sear, what agenda was it on that you want to remove it from? I'm looking at the June 15th full board agenda. Yeah, it's but, on the full board. But it's not on the committees. And June 15th is already passed. Uh, okay, what? I don't understand your point, Commissioner Hughes. 
You, I think what Commissioner Sear is trying to say Going is forward. that is that the is that that oh. restriction is lifted out of our processes and also removed from the agendas and the website, et cetera. Is that what I'm understanding, Commissioner Sears? That we are trying to convey. Okay. Okay. Are you asking so that that be done immediately, or when the governor said it would be done on the 22nd? As of June 22nd. Okay, as of June 22nd. So, so all you're asking is for us to follow the recommendations that the governor sent out today for the 22nd. That is the date for the motion that I've made. Okay, I got it now. Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to request that Melinda uh, separate the issue so that we're voting on, ish on the I issue. Just, that she's I already gonna, done that, Marcia. She's already done that. She I removed already her. decided to say that. Thank you. She removed yep. hers. In the, oh, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. And and the motion now is exactly is to follow the recommendations that the governor put out today to right. remove the restrictions on the 22nd. Is that correct, Commissioner Sear? I believe so, yes. Okay. I'm agreeing to that. I'll make the other one a separate motion. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Is there any other questions on this at all? I think we've got it fairly clear now. Kathy, are you clear on this? Yes, I am. All right, can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. And Commissioner Laring? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you, and that yes. motion carries. Do we have any other final so, board comments? I Melinda? have some questions. Yes, I have questions then. So, um, this may be a little premature according to um, Chair Skolnick, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway because it'll cause us to have less questions when we come back on Tuesday. So regarding all of these restrictions are lifted, does this gonna require us to continue um, doing these meetings hybrid? Or are we going to be back, all of us back in the boardroom for the meetings? Can we talk about that or? Susie, may I? Yes, yes, please go ahead, Bob. Listen, the plan as of right this minute is to eliminate the hybrid meetings and go back to meetings in person. But we just need to give us a chance to talk about it so we can meet on sure, it. Sure, I, under and, and I understand. And come up with a good plan. But that's what we're, that's likely going to be what we're going to do. So Here's let me ask you this. Yeah, go ahead. may I go ask ahead. another question, Commissioner Hughes? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, so I actually have not seen this um what the governor put out today i haven't seen it yet okay. um so i don't know the answer to this but are we does the oma continue to allow the hybrid meetings via we zoom if someone so wish no we let, don't know that but we do know that the county has has put that in theirs to <laughs> allow it susie if, yes. if you could let mark answer that i think he okay. might answer mark, mark over it Yes, there, there's, there's two different orders there. And uh, the last order of the OMA, and Laura's on here as well to help me through this. I think it goes through October. Um, so the order today, I did not see from the state uh, reference the OMA, but it did reference uh, that there's no more masks required as of the 22nd, everything's open at 100%. So Laura, <laughs> if I can call on you pertaining yeah. to the OMA. Yes, happy to chime in on both. Um, I do have the order up if anyone's interested. If, the best way I find to get to it is if you just Google MDHHS epidemic orders and the website will come up and there is a new order posted that um, essentially rescinds uh, a list of nine emergency orders, which includes the gatherings and face mask order, which was signed May 24th and took, a, and took effect June 1st. Um, I'll note as an aside that this doesn't affect the MIOSHA rules, so we'll have to, in terms of workplace, which is not really the meetings part, but in terms of workplace, we'll have to see what MIOSHA does. 
With regard to the Open Meetings Act, um, the provision for uh, virtual attendance by summit meetings goes through December 31st, 2021, if you have that local state of emergency. This would allow, so if you continued having the local state of emergency, if you had a member who needed to participate electronically because of a medical reason um, or uh, something like that, that, you'd still have the ability to do that through December 31st. So may I ask another question to Laura, yeah. Commissioner yeah. Hughes? Certainly, go ahead, Commissioner Fagel. Okay, so I heard you say the OMA goes through October. December. And then you December. said, I, no, no. Oh, one, one, one second, please. No, I did. you did say at first October does allow the Zoom, and then you said with the state of emergency, it allows December 31st. Could you clarify those two, differentiate that, please? I'm not trying to throw Mark under the bus, but I think Mark is the one who said <laughs> I made a October. mistake. Oh, Mark said, said October. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry I Mark. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> okay. I, I said December. It's um. <laughs> you did say you did say December. Mark said October. I just wrote October down. I'm trying to take notes as I hear this. Okay, so that's sure. incorrect. Yes. yes. Sorry, Mark. That's that's incorrect. Incorrect. I'm just going to cross <laughs> that out because that's not incorrect. So, because that is incorrect. Okay. So if we do not have the state of emergency, then we must be back in the boardroom. Correct. Is that accurate? Okay, Correct. thank you. Yep. I just wanted clarification. Thanks. Yep, and I think Madam, we're putting together a short write up uh, for the county as well. I think I heard a reference to that earlier. But, yeah. Commissioner Madam Larry, Chair, go ahead. Yes, yeah, go ahead. So the state of emergency that we're clear, currently in is allowing Open Meeting Act. Uh, we're talking about the county building in particularly, but it is affecting every one of our townships, every one of our school boards. And I'm getting a number of residents that are complaining that their school boards are meeting via Zoom and they want to get back to in-person meetings. So uh, we need to end this emergency order that the county is in because it's not just affecting the county commission. Uh, it's affecting all of the townships and all of the cool. cities and all cool. of the school boards. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zach. And, and I'd like to comment on that too. It doesn't necessarily affect, the, it doesn't m make them do it. They just have the opportunity to do it because the county has. Um, and I'd like to comment on that too, because yesterday at the road commission meeting, they extended theirs out to September 1st because one of the members of the board, uh, the road commission is very concerned about his help. And so they decided it's, it's just, wait until September 1st to go back. And one of the things they cited was that they were able to do this because of that county emergency order. So I think we have to think about how it affects everybody one way or the other. And I know yesterday also at my Wimsedick meeting, the Transportation Policy Board, they made the same thing too, that they would not be going back until probably August or September. So that, and that involves many, almost all of the municipalities have a representative on that. So we do have to think about if we rescind that, it does affect people both ways. So- Commissioner Hughes, if I might. Yes, yes go right ahead, Commissioner so We've had some discussion in the past about just having, uh, I guess because of, if nothing else, to have an opportunity to have more of the, uh, the public uh, be able to, you know, uh, view our, our meetings is to have somehow an option of doing a Zoom or a Facebook or whatever. Uh, is that, that, do you think that will still be available it, in some way, shape, or form if we still be on YouTube and emergency order? I, I agree. I hope that that will stay so that the people can I mean, some people don't want to come, they want to be able to do their things at home while they're listening to the meeting. And I would prefer, I understand Melinda saying that they can do, they can watch on Facebook, but if they want to comment, I really like for the public to be able to make a comment to us from their own phone or their own iPad or computer, if they would like to have them without having to come to the county building, because it could could cause a problem and even if we move from the county building to another location we could have so many people at a meeting that it would shut us down so i would like to still have the option for the public to join remotely if that's possible i don't know if it's even Do, possible but that I might be a, a question for laura that's probably yeah. a question for laura yeah 
Right. So first, I wanted to take a moment to clarify, I think you understand this, that with the state of emergency, you can have the meeting virtually for any reason. Um, right. If you end the state of emergency, if someone has a medical condition that prevents them from attending, they could still part, they could still call in or video in, but generally, um, your meeting would be um, in person. So with respect to members of the public, the Open Meetings Act as amended is not entirely clear on that point because it speaks to the members participating. Um, so in terms terms of um, hybrid appearance, um, it's, it's not entirely clear in how they have drafted it at this point. It's something that we would want to look into and give you a definitive answer on as best we can under the language of the statute. Could you try to look that up by next Tuesday, Laura? Oh, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Does anybody have else have any questions? Charles? Yeah, question. Um, Laura, with the state of emergency that we currently have, even though we have the ability to do the virtual meetings, uh, we do not, we're not mandated to do that. If we wanted to meet in person, we could do that also. Am I Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Yes, it, it is optional. It gives you the authority to meet virtually, but you are not required to. So the state of emergency could continue and you could still meet in person. <laughs> However, the state of emergency is having detrimental effects because of this. I have had multiple, almost daily, people from multiple different schools around the county, not just my own district, that are so irate because the schools are forcing their kids with all these testings and all this math. And it's just got to stop. These parents and these kids, it just needs to stop. And I think we need to end the state of emergency because we're under that. It sets the precedence that everyone else thinks that they have to follow it. So nothing in declaring a local state of emergency at the county level impacts what schools do in terms of masks, social distancing, well, testing. I yeah, I understand that, but so many other people don't understand that. It sets <laughs> the fear. It's imposing fear on everybody, whether you guys you know, it, whether it extends fear on us individually as a board, but it is Madam, to the community. Madam Chair, may yes, I sir. have a comment? So sure, what's, it, thank you. So what's going on with these school boards and municipalities around the county? We're not mandating that they meet via Zoom, uh, but uh, this supposed state of emergency that isn't and never was is giving them the option to do this. And if we remove this state of emergency, then these municipalities and school boards have to go back to public meetings. And that's what the residents and constituents want. They do not like this Zoom. They want to meet their, their representatives face to face and have comment. The school boards in particular are using this way, our state of emergency to shield themselves from the public. And we need to get back and face our constituents uh, face to face, and they're using this fake state of emergency to to obfuscate their their responsibility to the citizens of this county. We need to remove this state of emergency now. Zach, I understand your position, but sometimes we have to let them make their own decisions. We don't; they they can make their own decisions. We're giving them an excuse and a, an ability to violate their oath of office. I don't think the oath of office required you to be in a building anywhere. It forces you to comply with Open Meeting Act and they and our state of emergency gives them the ability to to obfuscate the Open Meeting Act. It's our state of emergency. It's the hinge pinch of this whole thing. And we knew it when we passed it. Thank you for your opinion. Anybody else? Seeing none, we will move on. Is there any other comments, questions, or concerns for this meeting? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And we are adjourned.